Hello YouTubers, today we're going to do wheel bearings, basically. That's what a normal wheel bearing looks like, a front wheel bearing. So we're going to replace it in this fella. And so you get, you get the wheel bearing, you get a circlip and the new bolts. That's what you get in the kit. The way to know how your wheel bearing is done, very simple. When you drive the car, you're going to hear like a whirring noise. The faster you drive, the louder the noise gets. And the way to test if a wheel bearing is done, is when you jack the car up, you can physically see, you see that movement? Is that coming through? So you get movement left to right, and you also get movement up and down. Now hopefully that noise is coming across. You get noise there, and noise there. And to give you some idea, the other wheel, absolutely nothing, up and down. So that's how you tell if a wheel bearing is done, you get movement up and down and side to side. Whip off the old wheel. Now, this is what you're left with then. And basically the wheel bearings behind you this. So what you need to take off, is take off your track rod end, which is there. Take off your track rod end. Take off your ball joint, which is down here, the lower ball joint, which is there. Take off your suspension bolt, which is there. And that disconnects this. And then take off your caliper and your carrier. Because what we need to take out, we need, we need to be left with the hub. So just this part here. So that's what we're going to do next. So we're going to disconnect the brakes first, I'd say. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take off the brake caliper. Now the way I do it is, I like to get the, a big screwdriver in there and just push the caliper back. Now I know I'm going to get some comments saying you're not supposed to do it that way. But at the end of the day, if you do something on your car and you don't break something and you do it and it's right, who gives a shit which way it's done? If it's right at the end of the day and you do no damage, it's right, simple as. Right, so push back the piston. Take off this little clip. Well, what, actually, what I'm gonna do is now, rather, I'm not disconnecting the caliper from the carrier. I'm just gonna actually take off the whole carrier. So there's two bolts here. Bolt here and a bolt there. I'm gonna whip off that whole unit as one. Because it's just, it, just easy to do it that way. Now get in here. Get in, get in, get in here. Get in, in, get in here. You see these two bolts? That one and that one? Yeah. Now he's going to whip off these two bolts. 13 mil. Yeah. As you can see, the whole carrier and caliper comes off in one unit. Now, we don't want this to be um, just leaving here like that. So what we're going to do is, we're going to get a cable tie and we're gonna tie this up to there, just like that. Because uh, it stops it, stops any crap there. We'll tie in here, just keep it out of the way. It stops you from, uh, it stops any damage happening and it gets it out of your way. Yeah. Take off the brake. Now we can really see what we need to do now. This is the hub. This thing here is the hub. The bearing's inside here. So we need to take off the whole hub. And like I said, there's your bottom ball joint, the bolt there. Take off that bolt, which separates the suspension. Take off this bolt here, which separates your track rod end. And the big bolt in the middle takes out the drive. And then the hub is out. Easy, isn't it? Now, the other thing is, thinking about it, especially with track rod ends and stuff, it's so much easier with an air gun. Because if you were to do that by hand, there's a good chance you're gonna, the whole thing's going to spin. And then you have to get some um, vice grips in here to try and grip it and then that you can cause damage and all sorts. So it really is better and easy with an air gun. You can still have a nightmare with the air gun, but you have more of a chance of it not. Let's see if we can get it off. Ah! Now, without an air gun, that would have been 
bloody difficult. Let's try this one. It's bigger. Seventeen mil. Now the whole thing's spinning. It's not a problem. Let's get to this one at the top. Just loosening them. That's a nineteen mil. Now the easiest way to separate the track control end, the track rod, is with a hammer, and you hit. Obviously, take off the bolt, and you hit this part here. There's no. If you hit the bolt, you're going to damage the bolt. You're not going to put the nut back on and you're going to do damage. So you hit this bit here. Shot, shot, tap. Now, see that? It's fucking easy. <laughs> <laughs> now, because the bottom bolt is spinning, you need a T45 torque, which looks like that, to go into this end just to hold the bolt, stop the bolt from spinning. And then we'll use the air gun on the other side. Now. Oh. That's the end of the bolt there. I'll put another picture up there somewhere, wherever. Right, now, what we need to do is separate this. Now there's a few different ways of doing it. Uh, it's easier with two people, granted. Uh, doesn't really work hit it with a hammer this time as such because there's pressure. Your spring is pushing you down. That's basically a vice in between there now. So there's a couple ways of doing it. One way is to get a really big long bar, obviously a hell of a lot longer than this. I'm only showing you. You put it through here, you put it through on the car so it's hitting the car. And this, this, this bar needs to be about three or four times the length of this, right? So you put it through here, through the car, lever down on it, and then hit, hit this with a hammer here, just like that. That's one way of doing it. The way I'm going to do it, right, what I'm going to use is this gadget. It's just a big bar, basically, with a bend on the end of it and a hook on the, on the, hook in the middle. That's as simple as that. That's all it is. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to put the hook near the ball joint and I'm going to put the bar on the end of the wishbone. And as you can see, it's holding itself. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to push down on this end. As I push down on this end, you'll see this starting to come free. So I'm going to push down this end and let's see if this comes free. Now what I'm actually doing now is, it's moving, that's not a problem, what it's actually doing is, you see that, it's, it's actually moving um, the, the spring out, which isn't a big deal because we, we need to get them both out, so I just keep going. Now, that's the top one out. Now, we have to take this bottom bolt out now, this, uh, the drive bolt now. So just come in. What that's done is, doesn't really make a difference because they both have to come out. It's actually taken out the top suspension. Once we remove this bolt, that will just lift up with my hands or if this one was out, you just slide it down with your hands. It's as simple as that. They both have to come out. It doesn't matter which one comes out first. Right, what we need to do now is take off the big nut in the middle. 32 mil spanner, uh, socket even. Oh yeah, by the way, this is a 99 Fiesta. You got to mention that. Now it's taken out. The nut. You get a new one of them with the kit. So now we can actually take out the drive, which normally comes out quite easy. So this one be stuck. I've got a little trick for that as well. What I'm using is a little air tool. It's like an air, well it is an air chisel with the pointy end on the top. 
Because again, if you start hitting this with a hammer, you're gonna damage the threads, the bolt's not gonna go back on because we're not replacing this. So we, we need to keep the CV joint as good as possible. So this end just slots into there and the actual shock shocks it back. Remove that. Now you can actually see where the splines go in, that, that's where it all connects together. So we're just gonna shock that back. Now to be fair, that should have gone back. So we could have a problem here. That should have gone back a lot easier than that. So what I'm gonna do is, it's obviously seized inside here, the splines. So I'm just gonna put a, put a bit of lube WD-40 or SAS, something along them lines, in there, leave it for about 15, 20 minutes, let it penetrate and hopefully then this will come off. If not, we're in trouble. Now what I'm using is SAS. I'm just gonna squirt it inside there. Hopefully it'll penetrate. That's the only place you can really squirt it, unfortunately. I'm going to leave that for about 15-20 minutes and hopefully it'll come out because you can't really heat this because if you heat it you're going you're to do damage. Now we don't care about the bearing obviously but we are worried about the CV joint. We don't want to damage that. Have a cup of tea in the meantime and let it, uh, let it soak in. Now uh, this was supposed to be a video on how to change a wheel bearing uh, which is simple enough to be honest. It's now been coming into how to take a drive shaft a seized dry shaft out of the hook because it's completely not to be seen. So what I'm going to do is if you just look under here, I'm going to take out the drive near the gearbox. Sometimes there's a metal clip or a plastic clip and this one happens to be a plastic cable type. So we're just going to literally rip that off. Right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take out the whole drive. From the gearbox itself. Now, now here we go, bring it out to the light. Normally, this part of the drive you, you would leave in the car, but it's completely seized inside there. So I'm going to try and put it on the press and see if we can press it out. I'm going to put some more stuff in there, now it's completely upright to let that soak and give it another 20 minutes to soak. So this is really just letting it soak in now, but now it's completely upright. Hopefully this should, I'm going to make a big puddle of it inside. Now I'm going to give that about 20 minutes, I'm going to get this level and we're going to try and push it out and let's hope nothing breaks. What it's about, it's about learning, isn't it? Now, uh, we've got it set up on two good lugs and the far one set on this bench here. So we should be able to, and it's fairly level. And we've got a bit of lube, which is SAS, inside there. So, hopefully, this should pop out. If not, we're gonna leave pressure on it. Um, and hopefully it'll crack. But if this doesn't work, because it just depends, this might not work, and if it hasn't worked, it's because the, you've left the bearing too long and the bearing heats up and basically welds itself inside there. So there's another video I have on weekly car checks and stuff. It, it, honestly, it's just best to do it because a simple job like this could now turn in to costing three times as much um, than it should have done. So, Pressure's just getting on it now, and I'm just checking to make sure it's level. If you want it as level as possible, you don't want anything to hit yet. It's always best just to stand slightly off to one side as well. And normally you press the bearing. It's simple, you don't really have to stand to one side. Because I'm doing this and it's a bit 
not that great. And the problem is you can't really put heat on that. If you start getting the gas touch and putting heat on that, you're going to warp it. Even if it physically breaks it apart, you're still are going to warp it. So put it back together, you're just going to have a big shape in your steering. So you can't heat this. If this doesn't work, second-hand parts or new parts, whatever, depending on your car, depending on what you can afford. Now that really is beginning to be hard now. I'm going to leave that there now, 10-15 minutes. Hopefully, something happens. One more pull. Wait and see. Now that's as far as I'm going to go with, with the first part of this. This wasn't supposed to be like this. This was just supposed to be a simple uh, how to how to change a bearing, um, but obviously it's gone into to a bit of a nightmare. So I'm going to split up into three parts um, to strip it, to remove the bearing, to fit a CV joint, and then to put everything back together. So this is going to be part one, and um, hope you enjoy it. Hope it's hopeful, helpful even, and uh, don't forget get your hands dirty.